Are the oceans so polluted that it's no longer safe to eat fish? The question I get the most is about mercury, and certain larger fish, especially carnivorous, do accumulate mercury over time, but that's naturally occurring, largely negated by selenium as it's antagonistic, and pales in comparison to the other stuff that can be in fish. If you simply avoid those higher mercury fish, king mackerel, marlin, swordfish, and certain tunas, mercury really is a distraction from the main issues. Now, there are thousands and thousands of studies on different types of pollutants in fish, but the general answer is to avoid seafood if you can. It really is that bad. Get your nutrition from land-based sources. You know, not that those necessarily aren't polluted, just not as poisonous. Since omega fatty acids, EPA and DHA do primarily come from fish, if you want to include it in your diet, Alaska and New Zealand are probably the least polluted. And of course, those fish farms where the elite are raising their caviar. Even so, you want to keep it to smaller amounts of the more nutritional parts of the fish, such as that caviar, salmon roe, and fattier fish in minimal amounts, you know, which is why we do have it on Frankie's free range meat, as well as raw cod liver oil. You know, if people want it, we might as well provide a high quality version. In my research, I've come up with 11 categories for these pollutants. The first few fall under POPs, persistent organic pollutants, which were widely used during the boom in industrial production after World War II. These include the well-known ones, PCBs, DDT, and dioxins. PCBs are polychlorinated biphenyls and they're highly toxic industrial compounds. You know, they were present in electrical equipment, oil, insulation, paint, and plastics starting in 1929 before they were banned 50 years later, 1979. And they're associated with various types of cancer. They have a fairly long half-life in the body and can take over a year to be completely detoxed. And that really applies to most of the stuff here. You have to remove it from your diet and be clean, quality, organic for pretty long periods of time to recover. DDT, dichlorodiphenyl trichlorothane, is probably the longest word we've ever pronounced on this channel, is one of the most controversial pesticides ever made. An estimated 4 billion pounds have been used in the environment. And back in the 1960s, they studied certain birds that became so polluted the birds were no longer able to produce offspring. Exposure to high doses result in vomiting, shakiness, and seizures. And a lot of these chemicals, you'll see, oh, well, it causes problems during development. Yeah, well, that's because babies are less tolerant of toxins. They will simply die, whereas humans will just suffer. And, you know, it's harder to prove that a human is being poisoned as opposed to a baby. And I remember, you know, one time I ate a bunch of farm salmon for two or three days straight carnivore style and after i ate it i was laying in bed like literally shaking i felt dizzy i threw up a few times i was poisoning myself with probably ddt and who knows what else so then we have ppdds and ppdfs which are polychlorinated dibenzodioxins and polychlorinated dibenzofurans and these are more commonly referred to as dioxins they're products of industrial practices, majorly from incineration, such as burning waste and trash. Environmental exposure to dioxins results in developmental and reproductive toxicity in fish, birds, and mammals. You know, the Great Lakes are an example of an aquatic ecosystem that has become greatly compromised by these types of pollutants. And as with most toxins, they're stored in the fat and liver, create oxidative stress, and as we said earlier, it can take years and years to be detoxed from the body. PPDEs, aka polybromated diphenyl ethers, are a group of compounds used as flame retardants. They're found in TVs, toaster ovens, mattresses, and drapes, banned in 2004, but still pollute our environment greatly. You know, the level of these flame retardants was five times higher in the Baltic Sea than the Atlantic Ocean. You know, the Baltic Sea being one of the most heavily polluted water sources so much that fish there aren't deemed safe to eat in most markets. You know, over a dozen years after these products were banned, they're still poisoning people. And that's something to keep in mind. Enclosed water sources, you know, take 
probably dozens and dozens of years to just clean themselves out. Moving on to microplastics. As a result of widespread contamination from human activity, microplastics are ingested by many species of wildlife, including fish and shellfish. Because microplastics are associated with chemicals from manufacturing and they absorb from the surrounding environment, there is concern regarding both physical and chemical toxicity. Following consumption, nanoplastics are transported through the gut into the blood and can cause toxicity in organ cells. There's also chemical toxicity associated with the plastics, but has not been as significant as these other chemical pollutants found in fish. Corexit is a product line of oil dispersants used during oil spill response operations. And one thing we didn't put on here is the actual crude oil coming from those drilled holes into the ocean that is also very, very toxic to wildlife, possibly more toxic than these chemicals and the Corexit itself. I'm sure most of you remember back in 2010, we had that really bad BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico where hundreds and hundreds of millions of liters of crude oil were leaked into the ocean. And then they put the Corexit in and these different types of coral larvae were dying, their survival rates decreased. Same with all of the other wildlife. This is basically just another legal toxin they're allowed to dump in the ocean. Who knows if it's actually making things better. Next up we have agrochemicals. And this is something I speak more about in the context of you know, raising cattle, pork, and chicken in a conventional farming setting. You know, and not to say that you know, the farmer isn't irrigating from a water source that does contain this. You know, I would imagine those farms in the Great Lakes area of New York might be irrigated with poisonous water. Therefore, you know, the cattle, the pork, the chicken that's consuming that, you know, it's still better off than the fish, but still consuming chemicals outside of the pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides that they're spraying on the crops. You know, two agricultural runoff events involving the pesticide Azinfos methyl occurred in July 2002 on the Wilmot River, Prince Edward Island in Canada. That resulted in the death of thousands of fish. Thousands, of, they, they, it literally killed the fish. That goes to show how much of this stuff they're allowed to dump in the ocean without repercussion. The water is so toxic the fish died Yet the next year, people were eating fish out of the same river. Imagine if you went swimming in that water and took a gulp of it, would you have drowned? Who knows? Pharmaceuticals and antibiotics. Not only are farmed fish directly given antibiotics, which are dumped into the ocean by the drum fill, except for the uh, elite sturgeon caviar, I doubt they're giving those fish antibiotics. Our water supply is laden with urine and fecal waste from millions of people pumped full of various drugs, from birth control to antidepressants, and this can include all the estrogen in the water. You know, the first priority is to stop drinking that water in your lifestyle, but it's still ending up in the ocean, and therefore we're probably consuming metabolites by eating certain fish and shellfish. Heavy metals, zinc, iron, copper, chromium, cadmium, and lead, all accumulate in fish depending on environmental factors. There are actually nutritional databases where you can see over a tenfold difference in the mineral content of certain shellfish grown in different waters. You know, one clam has 80 milligrams of zinc, another has 800. Two clams, one's gonna poison you with heavy metals. Absolutely crazy. Since many of these minerals are naturally occurring, the levels of pollution in the water correlate to the amount of metals in the seafood. Interestingly, you know, these other pollutants, when they're higher, equal more metals in the fish. These pollutants prevent the fish from being able to detox these metals from their organ systems, so they just accumulate in unrealistic amounts. If that ocean life is transferred to a cleaner water source, then the shellfish starts detoxing the majority of the metals in less than a week. And I'm assuming that applies to finned fish as well. And uh, if you guys hear anyone repeat what I just said, um, that's a hypothesis. It's not something I read anywhere. Uh, you know, I looked at a few studies and I put some pieces together. I'm assuming that the chemicals are preventing the fish from detoxing the heavy metals. And we can deduce that, you know, if fish are moved from one water source to another and the metals go away, then that's very likely a true hypothesis. Uh, the most gross one might be human waste. 
sewage, whether it's urine or feces, it's going somewhere. And this relates back to the antibiotics, chemicals, various metabolites that are poisoning us. You know, these create unnatural strains of bacteria in our stomachs, which in turn are excreted in the fecal matter. Then if that fecal matter is consumed via some shellfish or fish that contained it, you, know, you can get very, very sick. And come to think of it, I bought some oysters like a year or two ago at a supermarket I probably shouldn't have. And when I opened them up, they literally smelled like rotten sewage and they were probably in rotten sewage. Uh, and I guess this would happen if you were to try to raise oysters near any major city, perhaps the East River of Manhattan or really any water source near any type of pollution. Now, you could argue this entire topic has been swept under the rug, but nothing more so than the radiation pollution because this might be so bad, it wipes all the other stuff out the window. You know, the Fukushima stuff, this one aspect for some people is enough to never consume fish near Japan, certain sources, and that Pacific Ocean where we might find some decent seafood around Alaska and New Zealand might have actually become compromised because of uh, the Fukushima nuclear disaster. And, uh, you know, these degenerates in charge have been polluting our food for dozens and dozens of years. The ocean is no exception. You know, how have they allowed the dumping of these chemicals, you know, combined with the lack of acknowledgement is truly disgusting. You know, if you understood how poisonous fish can be and that they're still even allowed to put it in a supermarket, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy. You know, if you understand the negatives in fish and you can translate that to the rest of your diet, you know, you'll be worrying more about not poisoning yourself as opposed to consuming nutritious food. You know, personally, I have, you know, no issue eating certain things like the caviar, the salmon roe, and I still do on occasion. Uh, but I would certainly be wary of the majority of seafood as it is very likely not safe to consume. You know, I had some wild caught shrimp that were kind of small a week or two back for some omega-3s. But again, there's a reason we have lamb brains and animal brains and that type of stuff on Frankie's free range meat. It's a much safer source of omega-3 nutrition. So thank you guys for joining me today. Let me know how you like this. And you know, if you know about any other, you know, really in-depth, uh, fish pollution stuff, uh, definitely point it out to me. I'd love to check it out and see how this compares. Uh, but outside of that, you can go to frank uh, You can see everything that's available from Frankie's Range Foods, Frankie's Naturals. Uh, hopefully we have a couple other things going for you guys soon enough uh, to make you as happy and healthy as possible. Uh, so thanks again for joining me today, guys. If you could please you know, like the video, leave a comment, and, and please, if you can, share it on social media. You know, work very hard every day, you know, for about four years straight now, trying to make it happen. Um, I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.